Hi, I'm Frankie Barnhill here with Haley Falconer with the City of Boise, and we're talking about recycling, the new orange bag program, and what can and can't go into your garbage bin uh, under this new recycling program. It's a story that I've been working on for a while, and Haley's been working on for how many months, this program? We're probably about eight months now, and really six months in the weeds of how to get a new program rolled out to everyone in the city of Boise. Yeah, and before we start, how did this come about? Tell us about a little bit about why the Orange Bag program came to your attention. Yeah, we had kind of two things at the same time. One, we knew that China was about to implement changes on the types of plastics that could be imported. We didn't know exactly what that was would mean, but we also had a company, a local company called Happy Family Brands. They make organic baby food and they make them in kind of the squeezable pouches. And they have a product that is currently not recyclable, but something they wanted to do differently. And they approached us with this energy bag program because it was something that could collect and divert the types of materials that they use for their products. And so we met with them and we worked on this grant through Dow and Hefty and at kind of the same time th these two things converged and we were able to solve the three through seven challenge of not being able to recycle those hard to recycle plastics but also to be able to do so much more and divert additional materials. Yeah well we've heard from a lot of our listeners who are really wanting to get this right um, and who have some questions about how to do it right. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here to do a little uh, recycling show and tell which Perfect. you've done many of because um, the city's been doing open houses um, where people are actually bringing their trash to you and saying what do I do with this right? Yeah it's the best way I think to show folks we can share um, you know as much information simply in things that go out in the mail or are up on our website but one of the best ways for us to be able to inform and get things right is to do this whether it's in person or in this way in a video so thank you for having us and this is a way that we like to show folks there's so many different types of plastics it makes it really challenging and we hope that this helps people in their day-to-day -day decisions and kind of how not just how we recycle and recover materials but maybe how we change how we buy things and what we bring into our lives based on what we know. Okay well I've been digging into recycling <laughs> bins for a while so I'm gonna have you start on this side Haley. Um, what what can be recycled that we were recycling before and we can continue to using the blue bins. Great, so some of the things that are easy are things like our junk mail, office paper, other things like that, we're good to go there. Um, this is like a box board, so crackers, uh, granola bars, cereal, those can all still be recycled. Um, if there is a plastic liner, like crackers or cereal, that we can save for the next section, but take those out and recycle the box board. Cardboard, highly recyclable. We want any corrugated cardboard in there as Break well. Break it down first though, Break right? it down just to fit more in there, and certainly if you have more recyclables than can go in the blue cart, you could set an extra box out to the side of your cart and mark it recyclable. Aluminum cans, very recyclable. We like to have these in here. Tin cans as well, like a soup can. And then maybe where things start to get a bit complicated and we've really simplified what plastics can go loose in the blue recycling cart. So if something is a, a pot bottle, a milk jug, a detergent bottle, so a bottle being something that necks down and gets smaller at the top and is a number one or a number two plastic. And so We've got a bit of a challenge where we've tried to get away from the numbers, but we also know that those are the two numbers that are the most valuable. Something needs to meet those two criteria to then go into the card. So in this case, we've got a sparkling mineral water. It meets the criteria of a bottle um, with the lid off. Um, this could go into the blue cart. Okay, so maybe we should pause there. I think so. Okay, so so yes, mineral water, but pop bottles. Um, pop bottles, juice, juice bottles. Yep. Um, in the world of detergent, things like even shampoo in the kind of soaps, like a, uh, your dish soap um, at the sink, those sorts of things would all qualify. Yeah, and then of course, uh, mixed paper. Mixed paper. Um, so any office paper can still go straight into the blue bin. Newspaper, magazines, catalog, those things are all still recyclable. Okay, um, so let's shift into what is new in the <laughs> orange bag program. I'll, horn, uh, I'll hold the uh, orange bag for you. Oh boy, all the things. So maybe the biggest shift is we're starting to talk about three through seven. So things that used to go in the blue cart that are now going to shift into the orange bag is anything labeled a three through seven. So this is a cottage cheese container uh, that would go in here. Um, in this case, we've got a cleaner. Um, it's a number 
to this actually I lied to you is going to be this is <laughs> why we're doing this yep, this, is why. this is actually um, in checking that it's a number two it's a bottle this can be recycled okay. so that would go in there normal in the blue cart loose. in the in the blue cart loose here we've got um, old shampoo bottle. A shampoo bottle but it's a number five so it would go in here okay. here's a good example when we're talking about clean empty dry we've got a plastic lotion this could be toothpaste this could be a variety of household kind of bathroom things yeah, so not just kitchen stuff not just kitchen yeah. stuff we want this to be squeezed clean we don't want a half full lotion to go in there but it doesn't need to be opened and scrubbed out so this certainly can go in here but then some of the things that are most interesting we've got candy wrappers bread bags um, vegetable plastic that some of our things come in chip bags all of those can go into the energy bag just like that uh, zip clothes pouches and grocery bags those can go in here as well here we've got um, this could be a prescription bottle or a vitamin in this case this is a number one so actually the bottle itself would go into the blue, the blue cart loose if it were a number five it would go in here and then the lid can go this way okay um, similarly we've got probably meat here this looks like yep. lunch meat and a spinach container all of those go in here plastic silverware. These absolutely can go in the, the energy bag. The worry about them a little bit is puncturing the bag, sure. but I think if it's a few of them, it's probably okay. Similarly to straws. Okay. We have a lid and then this one. So we have a number one chili garlic sauce. Excellent <laughs> stuff. This would actually, because it's a number one and it's a bottle or a jar, this would actually go in the blue. Okay. So a couple of things, um, so it, it's a lot more, like this bag it, it, just got really full. It is, and we anticipated that because we knew that the three through sevens, they're called rigid plastic, so they yeah. do take up a bit more space than other programs that have rolled these out. So we planned for a bigger bag, so it's a 13 gallon bag. The hope is that the 26 bags that we've provided folks is one bag per every two weeks. Okay. And certainly if, um, if that doesn't work out, we've got our contingency plans for retail for folks to purchase more and have those if they need more bags over the course of a year. Okay, so every year you'll get a new, bags will arrive on your doorstep. For this year and for next year, and then I think the long term what this program looks like is still under evaluation, but we know for the two years we really want to get this program rolling, get folks um, incorporating this into their recycling and recovery habits and then figuring out how we get those bags to folks is probably the next question. Yeah. Other things that were in there included the dairy, so it was like a cottage cheese container. Yep. Washed out, yeah. dried. A good, how yeah. important is that? Let's <laughs> talk about that. We say clean, dry, and empty. And I think uh, being reasonable with that. So yeah. we're not asking folks to run everything through the dishwasher and set it out to dry. But giving it a quick rinse, we want to conserve water as well, but we also don't want a half full yogurt container in there. So that's yogurt, sour cream, dairy, those things can all go in there. A quick rinse in under the sink and then put them in there. Okay, great. So one of the things that was put in the orange bag include the grocery bags. So, um, you know, a lot of people have gotten used to when they want to be green or think about uh, reducing, they've gotten tote bags, right? But now with the orange bag program, technically, um, they can have this second use being turned into diesel at the Renewology facility in Salt Lake City. So what are the benefits, I guess, of, you know, either using a tote bag, what would the city suggest? Use a tote bag, you know, use the grocery bags that are given to you and put them in the orange bag or take them back to the grocery store where they can be uh, received. Great question, and I think one that as we move into our reduce and reuse portion of our recycling messaging, we will, I would be remiss if I didn't say we would encourage folks to bring something that's reusable. But knowing that that's not always the case, or I know that I may remember at the grocery store but not at Target, is something that we always, we still end up with these bags. And so actually bringing them back to the grocery store is a great option because that uh, could, is considered a higher use for those plastics. They go to, because you get kind of one clean source of plastics, you get all plastic bags, those go to places like Trex decking and get turned into a decking material. And so that uh, would be considered maybe a higher use than converting it to diesel fuel. So that is a great place to start, but certainly they can go in the energy bag. We've had folks encourage uh, putting them into the uh, stations along the Greenbelt and at Park so that we can clean up after our dogs. That's of course a second use for them as well. So those are all good things to um, 
get a second life out of those plastic bags and not necessarily put them straight into the garbage. Sure, sure. And yeah, the hierarchy of uses, mm -hmm. I guess, that's an interesting way to think about it. Yeah. Um, a couple questions from, we've gotten great questions from our listeners. That question came from Christina, so thank you, Christina. We also heard from Annette, who's wondering about ketchup bottle, mayonnaise bottle, Mustard sounds like her family's going on a picnic soon, which is awesome. What would you do with those? A similar process, looking at them for, first, those are all bottles, so they would be considered recyclable loose in the blue cart if they are also a number one and a number two. I think ketchup typically is a number one. It's that clear plastic. Um, for things like mayonnaise, it's a bit trickier because it's hard to get that clean and so just being cognizant of that if there's a ton of mayonnaise or peanut butter left in a jar we wouldn't necessarily want to see that but giving those a good a good cleaning and getting them uh, really scraped out those can be recycled okay so for the extra achievers should they mm -hmm. put them in the dishwasher or i think that they could i think it's hard for me to <laughs> to put that out there as a thing that must happen but Certainly just being cognizant of that balance of water use and recyclability. Sure. And since we've been talking about numbers, um, you know, some of the messaging that you, for the most part you haven't been with the, um, the handout that you've been giving to folks when they receive their orange bags, it doesn't talk about the numbers, but that's something that a lot of people, of course, are really curious about. So how do you think about just even in getting the word out uh, about what can be recycled, what can go in the orange bag, what not, when it comes to numbers? That's a great question and one that we worked really hard on because we're messaging not to each individual on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but really that first messaging is to our entire community. And so we really needed to have simplified messaging and focus on getting a few things done right and really backing, kind of decreasing that con contamination level. And so that's where we focused on pop bottles, juice jugs and detergent and milk jugs. It's like, those are the things we know folks can see the shape and understand what that is and put it in. And so behind the messaging that's gone out, that was really important. The next step, and in these kind of one-on-one -on -one interactions in the open houses, we are getting tons of questions about the numbers because it does, as you dive into all of these plastics, it's very complex. And so what we're working on right now is kind of the plastics deep dive on what that means so that we can refer back to the numbers but that it's still founded in that simple messaging that we started with. If you're going to do nothing else, please focus on doing these few things right. But then for the folks that want to do more, here we've got something that has numbers. Right. And is it kind of a win in doubt, put it in the trash? Too? It is, and I think that's, um, that's a tough message because we want to do things right and we don't want stuff going into the trash, but it becomes really expensive trash if we're putting the wrong things into the recycling. And so that is the message that we're really working to get out there. Yeah. Um, we heard from some people, including Marlene, uh, it's gardening time. And these are some, I don't know if this can be seen on the screen, but they're plastic, uh, probably came with, you know, starters for plants. What do we do with these? Uh, those, some places will take them back so that they could be reused again. So I would check with your nursery first to see if those are things that could be reused. Um, but if that's not the case, these can go into the energy bag. Okay. Great. Well, let me, I got a couple other visuals. I love it. <laughs> um, oh, pet uh, bags, pet food bags. So this one's really hard without seeing it in person. Sure. So again, when in doubt, I would put that in the trash. If you, if it's paper at all on the inside, so if it looks like the paper bags at all on the inside, that would be trash because it's two different types of materials and we don't want any paper in the energy bags. Sure. If it's plastic through and through, and there are some that we've seen that we know are, are completely plastic, that could certainly go in the energy bag. Okay, so look inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's important. Um, there's a couple more I had here, let's see. Oh, okay, so let's turn our attention that's great. to the table. Um, so what do we have in front of us? And uh, these are some kind of where it gets a little bit more difficult when it comes to the behavioral changes potentially. It does, and this really gets back to the numbers question. If yeah. it were as simple as we could say, all of this number goes here and everything else goes here, that would have been the best decision, no doubt. But we unfortunately cannot say that. So maybe to start with the orange bag, no number ones can go in the orange bag at all, the energy bag. And that's because of the type of plastic it is. It has oxygen in it. And so it's a contaminant for the process at Renewology. So that's 
maybe the first thing on numbers is no number ones in the energy bag. There's actually science behind the reason there why is. these plastics go in one, one bag or into the blue cart or into the landfill. It, it, there is, and that's a question we asked several times in several different ways because it would have been so much easier to just say, all plastics in the energy bag. But interestingly, the plastics that we are allowed to put into the blue cart have a higher commodity value being recycled into something else. And so we want those there before we want them in the energy bag. But for some of these things where we have a number one plastic that we've been calling a clamshell, but it's really the type of plastic and the way that the plastic is molded. So right. you've got this here that's a thin plastic. It's been molded, whether it's to the shape of the fruit or you have eggs that are shaped that way. Berry containers come in this. A number one that's really thin molded plastic like this, these end up, they cannot go in the energy bag because they're a number one. Right. And when they go in the trucks, they get just smashed down flat. And then what happens is they end up as a contaminant to the paper. And paper is 50% of what we recycle. So to have contaminants coming from so many different directions really puts our paper recycling at risk. And, and when so, you, yeah, when you mean contaminants, it means that things that shouldn't be in one stream are absolutely, ending up in that stream. Exactly, it, and it devalues that paper. It makes it hard for us to market that paper and do something with it. And so we want to keep these out. As hard as it is to, to say something should go in the trash, it is better for that to happen so we can preserve the rest of the recycling. Sure, and I've seen a lot of people, you know, talking online about alternatives. So mm -hmm. one of the big ones that I know I had to swallow and go, oh no, is berries. It's coming into the summer and I love my raspberries and they mostly come in the molded plastic containers. So what are alternatives for folks? I think berries is probably one of the hardest. If you were to ask me eggs, I would say eggs could be purchased in a foam container or paper container and a lot of times those can be uh, reused somewhere else or they can be recycled or now recovered. Berries is tough um, because I'm not sure. I'm sure the farmer's market has options for berries that are not in plastic. Um, I think part of it is to contact some of these companies as individuals, as citizens, to say, here's where we are on our recycling programs, and is there another way for you to provide this? And that's a harder lift. That's something that we'll be doing, talking to grocery stores, just so that they understand some of the packaging challenges, but I think it's also valuable coming from citizens as well. Okay, so quite a few things in the garbage. That's Yep, and then this one as well. Yes, that I think is mushrooms, yep, and mushrooms. it's a number one plastic that's not a bottle, so it would go in the trash. But there are alternatives, like we talked about. I mean, I could bring, a, actually I could use one of the grocery bags, the thin plastic ones, to get some mushrooms that are loose as opposed to buying them in that container. That's right, and some places yeah. use uh, paper bags as well that they've got there for the mushrooms, but it's just the kind of awareness now of all the different places plastic shows up in our buying. Yeah, it's interesting too I've just started like kind of doing some tests in my own kitchen about like what I can change over to and I'm sure you know the city employees you've been doing that for months <laughs> yeah I feel like uh, we're very attuned to it now and so now it's our role to be out in the public and talking about it but it is stunning how much plastic is in our lives and I think this program will hopefully make all of us a bit more aware of it and then that really gets into those changes that we can make to help reduce that. Yeah, what's one thing that your family has changed um, that was hard? Great question. Straws has been a big focus for us, so we've purchased a couple different types of reusable straws to try out, some that work better for us as adults and some that are better for the kids. Um, and then we do really like the squeeze pouches. My kids are four and two, and so we, we do still have those, which it's nice to have a place for them to go, but we have refillable ones as well hmm. so that we can make that food, put it, put the sauce into, so like applesauce into a pouch that they can use and we can wash out, so. Okay, so they might not even end up in the orange bag because you're finding an, a use for them in your own home. Exactly. Yeah. Um, the straws, you mentioned that, that's one, a sticking point for local businesses. Some of them um, in downtown uh, have actually decided to not um, have the straws in their, in their drinks anymore. Those kind of decisions, I mean, are you, 
surprised, I guess, that Boise businesses are starting to kind of think about these big topics? Not at all, and I think it's really exciting to see it come from that level. I think it really comes down to true triple bottom line sustainability. There is an environmental benefit, no doubt, but I'm sure there's also an economic benefit in not having to purchase as many straws, but it's created a media buzz in something that is a national and international story right now and hopefully more than a story hopefully a movement to get away from single-use plastics and in this case we're talking about straws as the thing that we can make a change on as individuals that feels like a choice I can make as an individual and do something about right um, okay, let's get back to the yeah. table a little bit. What else is on here? So we've got a couple of interesting things. So this looks like the new Starbucks cup to avoid the straw. And these are interesting. So cold drink cups have a little bit of nuance. In this case, these are fives. So the, both the lid and the cup is a number five. And even with the paper label, this could go into the energy bag. Great. So because it's a, in the three through seven, it could go here. There are some cold drink cups that are ones, both the cup and the lid. So in that case, if it were a number one, it would need to go in the trash. Okay. And that's that comes with both cold drinks from coffee shops, or it could be big packs of plastic cups that we might buy for a barbecue. Some of them are number ones and some of them are number fives. And so it's paying attention to that. If it's a number one, it cannot go in the energy bag. I guess I'm kind of impressed that Starbucks. Yeah. I don't, is, is that part of what their initiative might be? I mean, d deciding that this kind of plastic, there's a use for it versus the the other stores that might still be, or coffee shops that might still That's be a carrying a one? Great question. I don't know on the type of yeah. plastic. That's a really good question. I think the lid certainly is a response to customer changes, but I don't know on the type of plastic. That one surprised me a little bit, so that's a good thing. Let's do hot yes, coffee. Yes, I love a hot coffee. So this, uh, we, we joke that folks need to be a little bit of a mini materials recovery facility and do some sorting. So in this case, the little drink stopper would go in the energy bag. Okay. The lid is a number five, so it could also go in the energy bag. The sleeve is paperboard, cardboard, so it can go in the blue cart. But anytime we have a hot drink cup, these are made of two different types of materials. You have paper on the outside and a plastic coating on the inside. So these are actually trash because separating those out is really difficult. Is there an alternative? Are there uh, some coffee shops that don't have that plastic inside? For hot and frozen, like it's similarly with frozen foods, not really. We need that double barrier. And so the alternative would be bringing, bringing a mug. And a lot of places offer a discount for that. And that's one that's, uh, I think, similar to our grocery bags. It's getting in the habit of carrying a mug. So. Right, right. Um, okay, a couple of stragglers. <laughs> this one is random. This was um, a beauty blender for your foundation. Ooh, yes. yes. But it's the plastic that goes around it that, you know, yep. so I, them in place. I laughed when I saw this one. I called this one the stump the city. So <laughs> uh, if this were me and I'm looking at this, it is not numbered at all. There's nothing on there. It's molded in the same way that some of the other ones are molded. And because I don't know, and I would say when in doubt, I would throw this in the garbage. Okay. And I can always take something like that back and find out. I would say similar things like uh, batteries or things that like a USB drive or an SD card come in that really tightly molded plastic that's like molded right up to it and hard to open. Right. Those need to go in the trash. We've asked about those with Renewlogy and those uh, those are trash and not energy bag. Right, a lot of stuff at Costco, it seems like Christmas time, people get gifts in those plastic clamshells. Yeah, you know? so those types of things would all end up in, in the trash. Uh, similarly though, things we didn't talk about, anything that's wrapped, like if you buy toilet paper and it's all wrapped in plastic, right. all of that can go in the energy bag. That's great. Um, let's see, this is a... So a little, a little drink disposable, it's a number six, and yeah. so it could go in the energy bag. Okay. Um, we have some coffee creamer here that is a number two. So this could actually go loose in the cart. Okay, probably, probably wash it out. Wash it out, <laughs> lid off. <laughs> yeah. I feel obligated to remove it myself and show yeah. that that's the case. And we've left the two hardest things. So when this um, change happened, water bottles, became a point of conversation for us internally. And we were already messaging so many things that to get into the nuance of different types of water bottles in our detailed messaging was one complication too far. So we made the decision to really focus on what could go in the, in the cart loose that was high value and say no water bottles. Because to message the details of these two different types of water bottles was really a challenge. That said, it has come up a lot from folks. And so water bottles are hard. There is a difference. This is 
a kind of thicker ply, if you will. I don't think that's the word, mill. I think mill is the word of plastic. Um, there are a variety of water bottle makers that have this that feel very much like a pop bottle. It feels right. very, no, no different than a pop bottle. Mm -hmm. And then the ones that you can buy in, um, oftentimes in bulk, you get like a case load and they sound a lot different. When you take the little tiny cap off, the water spurts up. Um, we've talked about the Hulk test where you could take this water bottle and, and crush it down. Right, it's this, a flimsy it's plastic. It's very yeah. flimsy and it's been lightweighted for a reason. It is cheaper to transport. We can transport more bottles than we could have before. So there is an environmental benefit to less plastic. It just means that this is no longer recyclable. Right. So this thin plastic also acts like paper, squishes down, it gets into the paper process and it becomes garbage. And so these thin water bottles, we do not want in the recycling and these should go in the trash. Okay. Similarly, um, here with the lid, it could go in the energy bag. Um, the thicker water bottles, uh, we have continued to message no water bottles in the recycling, but if folks have these, these could go loose in the cart, lid in the energy bag. Um, again, I feel in the reduce and reuse world, we have safe quality drinking water and so encouraging folks to bring a reusable bottle and, and have that with them instead of having the plastic. That's great. So, you know, the orange bags, uh, many people have received them already, um, but if you haven't received them, where can you get your bags? So they are being delivered to each residence in Boise. And so by the end of next week, we should have all of those delivered. Uh, if folks have not received them yet, I would ask that they wait till the end of May and then reach out to us. Our website is curbitboise.org and our phone number is on there. And just let us know that you haven't received those as a city of Boise resident and we'll make sure that you get those delivered. Okay, and if you were to go through all the bags before the year is up, what would you do to, to get more? We're working with Reynolds and Hefty and Dow right now on a retail option. So we hope by the end of the summer, early fall to have these bags stocked in grocery stores so that they can be purchased there. So if folks need additional bags, they'll be there. And then come 2019, we'll have another set of bags available for folks. Okay, and if you don't wanna participate in the orange bag program, what should you do? Great question. We would just ask that folks let us know that because just from a tracking standpoint, we just wanna know. And if you could bring the bags back to us, either at City Hall or possibly at one of the libraries, we can then keep those and get those back to folks, to new residents that come in or folks who move, uh, we can get those back out to folks. Okay. And yeah, this has really sparked, you know, a lot of question about, you know, what do I buy? Where do I buy it from? What packaging is it come in? Do I really need to buy it in that packaging? So getting back to the three R's, recycle, reduce and reuse, but really it's reuse and uh, reduce first. So how does the city think about that? Yeah, that's really where we're headed. This uh, challenge of recycling was kind of thrust on us over the last year, six months to a year. And so the next focus for us is on reduce and reuse. And we want the community to be a part of that conversation. As the city, we see ourselves as a resource and being able to provide options and information, but we know that our community knows a lot about this as well. And so we want to be able to share that and help folks make the changes that they want to make, but also where, what role do we play as the city in helping that happen? Okay. Well, thank you so much, Yeah, Haley. thank you for having me. We're excited to be a part of this and certainly available to answer any more questions that folks have. Oh, great. And it's uh, kerbitboise.org. Kerbit website. Uh, kerbitboise.org. Great. Yep. Thank you. All right. Thank you.